Yeah. yeah so you guys uh, follow the trail uh, about a mile off of the main road. The hobgoblin uh, force splits up. A uh, bunch of them head south, and uh, a bunch of them turn back to the northeast. Um, and you guys uh, pick up your pace towards the uh, group of females, and uh, you can roll your perception checks. I see nothing. See no evil, do no wrong. Okay, so the hobgoblin would be distracted at this point. <clears throat> so they do not notice you. Uh, Rango and Magnus, you definitely notice the group moving across the plains to the south. What are you doing? I uh, let the party know that there is a ton of people there. The people who didn't party didn't see. So I'm assuming we have blind people in our party. Yeah, you're literally following the trampled grass that they're leaving, and uh, they're 100 feet in front of you. I don't see anything. I got a four for my check. Which way are we going? I mean, that's the failure of dice checks for stuff like this. Yeah. Like, do I need to roll to see something so obvious? I just like to do a perception check for perspective. Um, no, I got you. I just that, that's, it's just a, it makes it funny when you have situations like. I understand why you have people do it. It just makes it funny for situations where it's like, oh, there's something really obvious in front of you, but you don't notice it. Yeah, the idea is that you notice them off in the distance, and then we move to this stage. Um, that would be the point where you can see to some degree that it is mostly women. Um, they appear to be um, tied together uh, with one hobgoblin holding the front of the rope and one hobgoblin holding the tail of the rope and all the women tied to it. Uh, and then there are two hobgoblins uh, guarding them as they progress across the plains. Well, I don't have spell fire and I am pretty much out of spells. What? So that's, this should be fun. Yeah, that's, uh, shouldn't be too hard for you. I'll be, we'll be fine, right? We'll be fine. Okay, well, let's roll initiative then, unless you guys want to take an action beforehand. Uh, the only thing is, do you, I could try putting the one in the rear to sleep. Um, John, I'm John, I saw giving them, right? them. Giving the women a chance to run back towards us, but beyond that, I, don't know, I got nothing. Immediate. Um, as soon as I see him, I'll cast a shield of faith on myself. Okay. You're using your last spell slot to cast shield of faith? Well, if I'm going to go fight with a spear in melee combat, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, fuck it, I'll cast my... I'll activate my burst of speed. Okay, then we can roll initiative. Finish. Are we on horseback or walking? Uh, you guys would be walking because the horses belong to the uh, Baron. Yo, someone, someone throw me as high in the air as you can. I'm only Uh, what? What's my way? I'm only like 26 pounds with gear. Someone can throw me high, glide down, and be a distraction. 
you could, unless someone's abnormally strong here, maybe the paladin is, we could throw you all of like maybe four or five feet into the air. I'm at an 18. All right, like, he might be able to get you up to like seven or eight. I'll just like chuck me up in the air like a group effort. I, like try to get 20 feet and I'll just glide over. Yes, dear. Okay, what are you doing, Rango? Uh, well, I'm just I'm just going to start running. Actually, I've got decent athletics. I can probably jump up and be a distraction. Yeah, I'm gonna try to be all fierce and scary and r do run, uh, do running start, take a uh, take a running jump and try and glide over to them. So I'll do an athletics too high again. Okay. Uh, I got a 15. I'll use my luck domain to reroll that. 26. Okay. Well, 26 will put you four and a half feet in the air. And I'll just roar as a cobalt roar as I have my spear in my hand. Okay. I think I can get to, if I measured it out. Well, your movement speed doesn't change. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just doing the math, that's all. Uh, actually, I can go 15 more feet. Okay. Magnus, what are you doing? Did we determine uh, how late we were playing tonight? We did not. I have no issues how late we go. And it doesn't like, matter, matter where we end, because... We, we're playing tomorrow. Yep, that uh, was the other thing I was going to confirm is that you guys wanted to play again tomorrow. D&D is an addiction, man. Of course we all want to play. Pretty sure I can play tomorrow. So yeah. Okay. Just start at, as long as we start at the same time. Yeah, we can start late. Um, I think I'm going to take the kids to the pool tomorrow so I won't be back until just before the game starts. Okay, then we're on to the warrior. Uh, he will roll his perception check again. Failing miserably. Okay, then we're on to Samuel. Did he, did I, he just try to shoot me? Did I just get shot with an arrow? Is that what happened? No, that was a perception. Oh. They didn't hear me roar? Apparently not. Okay. Well, a kobold roaring is more of like a like a cat trying to sound like a lion. Roar! No, no, get it right. It's a kitten. It's, it's a, a cat, cat spitting up a hairball. <laughs> Don't hate the player. Why? The player is the annoying one. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Who else am I going to hate other than the annoying one? Okay, then we're on to Dranic. Your initiative didn't go in, so I just added you to the turn. Ah. Uh, well, I'll move up and hopefully they'll just get close. I'll hit them all at once. All right, that was a double move for me. Uh, I guess, uh, oh, still too far away. 
Uh, they are progressing slowly as the women uh, are starting to figure out what's going on here. Like, first they just thought they were prisoners, but now they're becoming obvious where they're going, and they're basically dragging the women along. Um, they are not ready to just be dragged on the ground desperate, but they're they're definitely putting up a fight at this point. And then we're back to initiative. Wow, these poor hobgoblins suck. Are they poor hobgoblins after what they've done? Yes. They haven't sold the women yet. They don't have any money. Yeah, but they still... <laughs> and they can sell the women all they want as long as we get the gold after. I have to. I might have to disagree with that one, but okay. Hey man, I need to start getting gold. I need to start getting making gold for my cobalt hole when I make it. Okay, Rango, you're up first again. I am going to. Fuck it, I'll charge. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna charge that one. Uh, he seems oblivious to your presence. Okay, well. I hit him. It's going to be funny when you hit him and he's still oblivious. He's like, that didn't hurt. You don't pass his DR. He doesn't even notice you trying to attack. I Fucking mosquitoes. <laughs> Not like I don't do that. Little. <laughs> it's it's a joke. Just <laughs> hey, am I not allowed to defend myself, fucker? He's like the blades of grass are doing more damage to his legs than you are. <laughs> okay, Dranik, let's see how much damage you do. No. Oh. Double move, and then I'll hit this one with a daze. Can you reach him? Oh, wait, it's only 30 feet. Yeah, I can't. Oh, then I do nothing. Okay. Then it is the warrior's turn. Um... The one in the back will provoke from you, Rango, as he continues to walk away. And the other two will move up and kill you. Um, does... Is this still the charge round? No, I don't, I, I don't get the plus to hit, because I'm not sure. Yeah, you I'm only get the eat. plus to hit for the charge. Murdering him slowly. Murder! Okay, well, the other two will charge you. Plus two for your charging and plus two for their charging. Makes these hobgoblins plus seven. And a crit. I'll lock that down so it doesn't crit. Just don't want to die to a crit. 
You don't want to die to a crit? Uh, let's see if it'll confirm first. Uh, be a 25. Yeah, no, I'm gonna lock that crit down. I don't think I want to take a crit. Okay, so he hits you for four points. The second guy missed, and the hobgoblins continue their march south. And we are on to Magnus. I really want this gold. Holy. Well, unfortunately, they've got all these women tied together, and they're holding on to the rope, so if they let go of it, they lose all of the women. And two hobgoblins can handle a bunch of humans. Two humans, a kobold, and a zeph, thank you very much. Holy fuck! What, what happened when you, F about? I, I crit and confirmed, so that's 19 points of damage. Okay, never mind. Okay, Samuel, you're in the back, taking your sweet time. <laughs> I morning. run 80 feet per minute, or per 40 feet per turn, so it's 80 per turn, right? I don't know how fast you run. I'm, I'm going to charge this one. What's your movement rate? 40. Is that because of your Shondackle affiliation? Yeah. You know, Entangle would have worked really well here. Stop the woman and the hobgoblins. Yeah, an entangle would have been perfect. Leap would have still been good. Even um, if you put but... even if you put half the girls to sleep, that would have really messed them up to dragging them away. away. That's my next plan. Hit the guy in the front. I just had to get close enough that I could hit the guy in the front. Damn, you do some damage when you're not taking a dirt nap. I, I do decent damage for level one at least. Especially if you're not taking a dirt nap. Yeah, the dirt nap is an important aspect that needs to be left behind. Yeah, unfortunately, when you wield a big weapon and go really slow, you are much more likely to take a dirt nap. I don't even go that slow. I run 40 feet per turn. Yeah, but you your initiative is minus 7.8. Yeah, I'll have to take some initiative. Uh, oh, I'm not going to get initiative feats. I'm not a fighter this time. <laughs> I can't be wasting you, feats you on get, that. You get paladin feats, though, as well. Yeah, but the paladin feats are much f further spread apart. Four, four, eight, twelve. yeah, I guess. Yeah, you don't get your first one until 4th level. By that point, as a fighter, you already have three bonus feats. I, hope, I really hope you uh, are taking Battle Blessing as soon as you can. Yes, Battle Blessing should be one of your first feats. Cast all Paladin spells and Swift spells? Like, come on now. Who wouldn't want that? You don't even get first level spells until fourth level, so there's no point in taking it before then. True. Okay, so... Uh, Drenik, you're up first. All right. Uh... Yep. I'll, uh... Hit a sleep right on top of her. Ten foot burst. Okay, that affects like four people? Yes. But the front four people, which is the big one. No, I, no, was, I was confirming that it, it was only four hit dice. Four hit dice, yes. Because he targeted five people. Are you putting the women to sleep to make him harder to pull or something? 
Well, some of the women, unless they pass, and then hopefully the hobgoblin doesn't pass. Who knows? We'll see. And then, then days on this one. Okay, uh, Drenik, you can roll a uh, an insight check. Is that just wisdom? It's intelligence. Uh, just an intelligence check if you don't have any. Um, you quickly realize that if you target a group of women, um, especially that position, uh, it affects the lowest hit dice first, so the common are more likely to go to sleep. Than the yep, unless they pass. Nope, because you only affect the number of people you affect. Four hit dice where the people make saves. Well, well, then I'm putting four women to sleep then. No, I just wanted to confirm. Why target the enemy when we can target the woman? That I'll seems like a great idea. Slow um, down. The 17, is that a save? Yes. Okay, so three of them fail. Yeah, but the girls are tied together, and now they're dead weight anchor. That is true. Okay, Magnus, you're up. And then uh, the days on, or did the guy pat the one I didn't of the roll the days uh, check? How many women did you put to sleep? Three. Even Dranik is uh, not boring enough to put four women to sleep. <laughs> Holy crap. Crit oh, crit crit. Crit. I'm glad that happened here and not in combat. So what? This is combat. Right, right but this is putting the women on the third one. It'd be a lot worse if this is while getting hit. <laughs> you just you just cleave, pierce someone so hard you pierce through and bleed or get blood all over the woman. How much damage did you do to him? Uh, that was actually pretty low. Only 12. With a double crit? Oh, no. Double crit. What is max max roll? So, 22? You only plus one to damage? Yeah, it's until all my damage didn't come from when I switch over to intelligence for damage. Oh, okay. You realize you get intelligence and strength, right? Really? Yeah, you just get your intelligence to damage as a bonus. Yeah, oh well. Which you can also replace with your uh, your dexterity and stack your dexterity with your strength. If you ever have that many feats. Yeah, that's the problem. Okay, well the one remaining hobgoblin who just witnessed all of his friends dying... Uh, we'll probably flee after Rango goes. These are CR1s, right? They're one halves. Why, you get bonus for killing hobgoblins? Uh, defeating with, uh, crits. I move here and I cast Fire Jolt. Okay. What, uh, god do you follow? Tamora. Oh, okay. The mighty kobold running forward. Did you roll to confirm your double crit? Yeah, in the third one, I got a seven. Oh, okay. Which was enough to still hit, just not a third confirm. You hit with a seven? Uh. Oh, no, I didn't hit, so only 20 points of damage. Fair enough. Still more already. Still more than enough to skill steal me, asshole. Yeah, well, that's what you get for sucking. Okay, well, uh, the hobgoblin will uh, run the fuck out of here. Uh, then we're on to Samuel.
You said the Hobgoblin ran? Yeah, he's horribly outnumbered, no chance of winning. And even he does fast win, he's gotten a way of controlling all these women now. How fast is he moving? Uh, he moves at 30. Like everybody else. More importantly, how did these weak-ass mofos get into town and take this many people? Well, there There's no guard. of them originally. And, and no guard. You keep bringing up these guards. Yeah, but... yeah, what the guards have to do with anything. I said there were like uh, two dozen hobgoblins who attacked the town. Yeah, right. They each grabbed a woman and dragged her out of town. They tied them all together when they were outside of town, and then four of them took them to the uh, rendezvous while the rest went home. I'm just saying, even normal peasants have a 50-50 chance on taking these guys out. Yeah, if they have weapons and they're not tied up. Yeah, I'm not talking about the women right now. I'm talking about when they were in town. Yeah, that's true. Simply closing a door would make it difficult for them to get to you. Yeah, that's why they didn't take hundreds of women. They grabbed the women that were easy to grab. Okay, are you doing anything, Samuel? Uh, yeah, I'll get to the front of the line and tell the women to start following us. It's probably better we don't, uh, and to, un and to have, and then I tell the rest to help untie them as we walk. We're not going to want to take our time on this. Okay. So the, uh, hobgoblin flees into the hills and, uh, you guys can return to town. By the time you get back, it's getting, uh, pretty late in the day. It's been quite the monumental day for you. Uh, I didn't have time to go kill that hobgoblin. I was saying, I'm going to ignore it. You can go like... off on your own. I'm, the party is collecting the women and going back in the other direction. You can do whatever you want. No. I chase him down for a bit and try to kill him. So for like 100 meters. 100 yards. Okay. That puts you off the map with regards to the hobgoblin. No, oh, okay. Well, I didn't know he'd run that far already. No, no, no. I meant this turn, what are you going to do? Oh, I'm up 40 feet and double firebolt him. Okay, we'll do that. But oh, okay, I didn't know. That, the party is going in the opposite direction. Okay. I mean, he's chasing um, it down. We aren't in as much of a hurry. We just, if he gets away, then we're not going to want to. Uh... Move slowly. I'll I'll just I'll just loot the guards that are already dead. I'll say my my priority is just getting the women back. My I will just loot the bodies. Deflowering them before the month is up. <laughs> hey, this is the perfect time to deflower all of them. They're all chained up already. I mean, that that don't think that I I can justify Samuel being okay with that. <laughs> Okay, um, they have long swords, uh, javelins, and a cure light potion. So four, four, and twenty for our official loot tracker. I guess it would be three, three, and fifteen since one guy got away. Okay, so you guys gather up the women, head back to town. Um, one thing that I will point out is there is a group of minotaurs to the south that are supposed to rendezvous with these guys, so it is significant to get them off of the plains as quick as possible. Agreed. We don't want to be taking our time on this at all. No, 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 I wasn't suggesting that that was going to happen. I just meant if you continue to, like, chase him into the hills, you're running towards the Minotaurs. I'll pull the Cobalt card. <laughs> <laughs> I am but monster too. Okay, He's okay. Leroy Jenkins. Leroy Jenkins! But yes, head back to town. Yeah, you guys head back to town. And uh, uh, 
you guys a lot of these people are actually from the jolly jug they came outside to see what all the commotion was about as a pack of hobgoblins came down the street and uh grabbed them i'm surprised there wasn't other people there based on what we've seen so far that weren't able were able to help <laughs> well there there were normally people there that could help but the thing is once the hob, the hobgoblins basically each grabbed a woman and started to run off with her they didn't take their time at all they're just like yeah. grab one go yeah they each grabbed a woman and ran off with her they're worth a lot of money you only need one how much are the minotaurs willing to pay for that that is a good question i didn't really think about you it you said a lot of money i thought maybe you had an idea of like the exact amount well, like I said earlier in the session, the Minotaurs consider the women to be the highest level of prestige. So they're willing to basically pay anything for them. Obviously, there's going to be some negotiation. And Isn't it worth process. more prestige if you take the woman yourself, though? Come on. Minotaurs sure. are yeah, definitely. weak in will if they're not willing to try to take the women by themselves. That is definitely true, but um give it a little bit of thought uh how many men would be oh, I know. This have is sex with a prostitute like if you've got a hundred bucks and she's ready to go and that's basically it is they definitely would prefer to do that but they also know that when they attack villages and whatnot they tend to lose a lot of their followers so um and the ones that charge forward are the ones that die, so they're less inclined to do it. There is always the uh, the renegades in the group that do it, even though they know it's likely death. Like that is the basic uh, reproduction strategy of most males in the wild: is you're a lone wolf, you basically have to take out some other dominant male and take his women so uh lots of wolves die that way not many choose to not try but a lot of a lot run away um quite badly beaten up but uh everybody is uh very excited and happy that everyone was returned unharmed um no one ended up actually being uh, seriously injured or uh, killed in this oh, whole scenario. We uh, played that really well. I would. I'm prone to agree. I think that we didn't. That ended up going really well for us. So uh, when you get back to town. Um, the uh the baron will eventually contact you about a reward for your services both to uh him personally and to the town so you should think of something that uh you would like as your reward and uh decide where you guys want to go from here what your next plan is we have to get back to the murders the figuring out the murders now yeah you could go back to investigating the murders from what you have determined so far it seems to be a bit of a dead end we failed to let the constable uh or the baron know about the constable's death well the constable's death would be public knowledge by now oh okay i, I wasn't sure yeah eventually uh it becomes obvious that timothy didn't come home from work today so I didn't know how much uh, time it, passed. it was the same day, so yeah, everything happened in one day. Basically, the story starts at two o'clock in the morning when you find the body nailed to the wall. You rest, get up in the morning, and then do it all. It's been an eventful evening. Yes, it was a very event eventful twenty four hours. Basically, you went to this tavern twenty four hours ago to meet up with your friends and. Uh, enjoy some revelry and 24 hours later you've been to hell and back
It almost seemed like that's probably enough to make him forget about his other issues. Not that he entirely would. No, that would make sense. That is a lot to digest. Um, so, Jerry, just out of character question. When I we rest, I get all seven of my Spellfire back, right? My con modifier back for Spellfire? You get your con modifier. Your con modifier isn't seven. Oh, wait. Okay, so it's half my con. It's half my con is my max, and then I get my con mod back per day. Yeah. So what's your con? Three? Uh, yes. So two. It's two. two. So I got two back per day. Then why do you have 11 hit points? Uh, because it's... Uh, oh, D8, right. I forgot I switched some stats around before the game started. No worries. I, that was why I thought you had three. Um, that was a poor stat choice since your spellfire is based on your con, so you want your spell your con to be high. But that's obviously up to you. Um, so yeah, you get two... Uh, Spellfire levels per night when you rest, and uh, you can have a maximum of uh, seven in total. Yep. Without suffering any consequences. Okay. And the more feats I take, Spellfire feats to take, the higher it goes, Scott. Yeah, there's a. It's in each of the feats. Um, yeah. And each and one boosts you up a little bit and gives you some kind of perk. It doesn't really start coming into play until I start absorbing spells, anyways. Um, yes and no. It depends on how much downtime you have. If you have lots of time to charge yourself up, that's quite handy. Like I said, when Kenny was doing it in the Plane Escape game, he he frequently over, overcharged himself because it was such an advantage to have all that extra spell fire just sitting there. Yeah, I remember he could burst out like frickin' 10d, 10d8 on fucking some spell or some ability. Well, when he did that, he, uh, he cheated, but um, that was just an oversight on both our parts. You can't release more spell fire than uh, your con. Yeah, your uh, half your con. Okay. Now the best way can do you, does con boost do that, or would I have to get like a permanency spell? No, anything that'll boost your constitution will increase that uh, value. Okay. Um, but keep in mind, if for some reason you have that boosted and then it goes away, uh, you can find yourself moving up categories. So if you boost your con by two and you go to nine slots and then for whatever reason you're in a magic dead zone or something, something turns off your con, uh, that pushes you immediately pushes you up into over 100%. Okay. I plan on taking a lot of the spell fair feats anyway, so if worst case worst case comes to work. And it's a spellcraft check, so as you get better at uh, maintaining it, it's less significant. Like the check doesn't really go up, it just uh, uh, hovers at that level. So I think I think the base check is like ten or fifteen. So once you can make that check without any difficulty, it doesn't really bother you to run hot. Okay. And I think the first category is you roll the check once a day or once an hour, and then one of the top ones is like every round you have to roll it. <laughs> that's when you know you should just get rid of some. Yeah, well, that's more more of a in-combat thing. Like if you're you're absorbing ninth level spells in combat, you're going to overcharge really quickly. So that could be uh, a situation where, yeah, you only have to make one or two checks, but they're super hard checks because you are so far over your limit. That's fair. Just like positive energy. You get too much and you burst. Okay, so you guys can sell your loot in town. Um, what is your plan for tomorrow? Uh, well, Samuel's got, is going to take the Minotaur helmet to somebody to help, uh, make sure it's clean and, uh, taxidermy, taxidermy, or maybe does, does that one make more sense? Like stuff it or. Maybe even just take all the flesh off and keep the skull. Yeah, you can do either. You can just uh, boil the skull to keep it preserved, or you can have it taxidermied into, like, a trophy. 
either one is fine um, that's not an expensive task probably cost you a couple of silver pieces to get that done but from a uh, game perspective uh, what is your plan for the morning Uh, it's an excellent question. His family won't be home by the time uh, the next morning comes along. No, you don't expect them to be home until at least tomorrow night, because that would be roughly how long they would uh, search for. They would spend today uh, scouring the plains and tomorrow riding back. If she isn't found within that window, they're going to assume that the worst has happened. You want to have any good ideas for the, what we're going to do tomorrow? I'm trying to think of what would be a good course. I mean, part of me doesn't want to leave town purely for the fact that the hobgoblins could try again. And this time not split their forces when they take them to the Minotaurs. Um, but on the other hand, the town's probably going to be a lot more quiet till the guards get back. Like maybe not go out drinking and whatnot and stay in your house. The door's locked. Uh... Yeah, I can definitely see a lot of people uh, wanting to stay home and read a book. You're telling me I, I shouldn't drink? Uh, no one's going to want to abduct you, so you're fine. Yeah, I'm just a scaly rat. Come on. Uh, well, for the night, David will probably just go home with his trophy and everything. Need Samuel? Yeah, I keep... Why did I say David? David's his brother. brother. I was thinking... Yeah, I was thinking about him, what his brother is going to think. Like, what he do all day, his chores, and Samuel went out and made a Baron very happy with him. Although he's probably getting yelled at for not doing his chores before leaving for the day. <laughs> And also, I'm sure your mom's going to be excited to know that you were in battle with a Minotaur. That is that is a fair uh, criticism that she will have. You gotta let go of those apron strings at some point. How dare you? Whether she wants you to or not. <laughs> she just cares about her boy. <laughs> Sorry. Death is immediate. Okay, well, you guys think about what you want to do. I think this is a good place to leave off. Um, Agreed. We, we can pick up tomorrow, and uh, if you guys come up with a plan, I can prep something tomorrow. Oh, you're trying to get us to come up with a plan so you yeah, can Yeah, I want to know what you're going to do tomorrow so I can have something re ready for it. Well, I assume something's going to happen with the Baron, like, because uh, you said he was probably going to reward us, that, and that might not be immediate, so that's probably a couple days away from happening. Yeah, uh, there's all kinds of, uh, like, roleplay stuff we can do, but if you guys actually want to do something in the next session, I need to know what that is so I can prepare it. I'm totally fine with the whole session of RP again and dealing with all that stuff if that's what you guys uh, want to do. And uh, I'm fine with that as well. Um, we should probably we still got the agony producer slash bane enthusiast to deal with. 
Yeah. Either talking to Quarlo or talking to Wilson or scoping out their place anyway. Uh, maybe uh, make some friends with their servants so we can act like servants and just check the place out or hell. Yeah, we know where their servants like to go drink. Is it the Jolly Glug? We can spend some time trying to get information out of servants or something. They may not be directly connected to the murders, but they might be connected to someone who can get us the information on the murderers or the murderer. That's fair. The biggest thing about the uh, the murder is that you haven't found anything that ties back to the actual person involved in it. Correct. And I have no idea how or where to get that info from. That is fair. We have nothing because I'm at best it's somehow connected to the priest but I don't think he's actually the one instigating the murders I think he's tangentially connected somehow hence the reason I was going to go scope out people that were showing up for worship. But then we got sidetracked with these hobgoblins trying to take over the city. Well, we were about to go question him, too. For the purposes of moving things along, um, I will let you know that the cleric of Bane obviously isn't involved in the murders because no he for sure wasn't and he seems to be promoting his faith in a way that is under the radar like he is discouraging his followers from doing these types of things and seemed sincerely upset that these types of things are happening um, you might have another murder to deal with uh, when he finds whoever poured the blood all over his altar, but that is a different uh, tangent in the game. It does seem really upset about that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I don't think he's actually involved, but I think someone in his circle is involved. Why do you think that? Because of the blood poured on there, on top of the fact that uh, I think it's they're trying to pin it on him or on Bane itself. So, if you were a follower of Bane, why would you be trying to incriminate other followers? Because he's not a follower of Bane. The cleric he's... is, though. No, what no, he's what... suggesting is that the person who's committing these crimes isn't a follower of Bane. Oh, yeah, no, I don't. I agree. I don't yeah, think he is. is. But how best to pin somebody on it is by, impl like, right? You gotta, you gotta know something about their group to really pin it on them. So it means he's probably going two services or at least gathering information on them. I can see the logic behind that. I just don't know where else to go with this unless it. we just think it has something to do with Wilson and Carlo. But those are our two leads on the murders. That's it. That's all we got. 
you guys determined that it happened on the full moon or on the new moon, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. But that meant nothing to any of us. No, that's true. It's like that, okay, that was a full failure. moon and or um virgins. So what we got? Werewolves and sacrifices. Yeah, we we butchered all those. And we don't know anything about werewolves or have anything to suspect other than unless that's considered common knowledge in game. No, that would be a check to determine. Yeah, so we um, are Real talk, do we level? Yep, you guys level. This is the longest first level ever. See, for me, I'm not sure if I want to switch to Swashbuckler or stay on Rogue. Why would you stay on Rogue? Uh, evasion and a Rogue talent um, is nice, but also getting a weapon, weapon finesse. Well, I was going to switch it out on Swashbuckler to Dex the damage. It would up my damage a lot. Yeah, it would. But the rogue talent I was going to take is the, I think it's, I don't remember what it's actually called, but it's, if I do an acrobat through a person's square, I catch them flat-footed. Yeah. My acrobatic skill right now is 14. Yeah, so you only need to roll an 11 to do that. Failure is terrible, though. Yeah, I know, but talking about later down the line, that would be really nice. Yeah, it would be, but my point is, why rush into taking something at second level you can't use until eighth level? So, swashbuckler it is. But even but if you take the rogue, why wouldn't you take, like, fast stealth or something else that you can use right away? Yeah. I would always go with the... Uh, the, the swashbuckler just because it, if you spread out your rogue levels then you can circle back and fill in your skill gaps because you can only take swashbuckler skills with your swashbuckler points So, on top of evasion's not super important until like later levels when they're throwing multiple spells that you have to dodge out of the way of now the real question is: Is it better to go sword one for myself or go shaman? Two? It's up to you. Just rotate levels all the way to six might be the best play. Might be. You might also find that uh, getting a bunch of uh, shaman levels is more useful to you. At least getting the first three. It increases your caster level, uh, gives you better spells, gives you more spells. That's that's fair. Like casting first level clerics or first level sorcerer spells isn't that bad at second level. Um, oh hell yeah! Nice. I mean, I technically I uh, would be a second level sorcerer. Uh, sure. But or no, you're just already a second level shaman for caster level. Yeah, that's true. I'll just go with the shaman because you don't even have the thing built. I used to have a swashbuckler. Yeah, well, I'll just not worry about it because you don't have the possessed one ready yet, so I'll just do it at fourth. Nice, Drainic. I'll be making my one reroll. Nice, Drainic. Awesome. This is why I always just take the half. Yeah, it's extra good on a uh, D6 because it's already four. It's basically impossible to really get better. That is the only die where I recommend people just take the average because it's just not worth the odds of uh, getting it. Although Jesse's uh, still rolling D6s for his sorcerer. Mm hmm. For Fuhr? Yeah. Like he had max hit points at third level. 
Oh yeah, and I'm still rolling five to six every time. Drannik's getting your ones and twos. <laughs> I just hit, not bad for a second level, 24 hit points. I'm at 15. That is pretty insane. Yay for 14. I almost out helped you with just first level. Okay, well, I'm going to take off. Um, you guys can level up your characters. Uh, email me your updated versions, and uh, I will catch you tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Later. Catch you Later. tomorrow.